Welcome to 50 Ways to Succeed at Work, where you hear stuff about ways to succeed even the most well-intentioned colleagues, advisors, careers officers and HR departments may never get around to mentioning. Astute Adapter. Why it pays to go with the flow. Malcolm enjoys his job as a customer advisor. He handles most of the problems coming his way without blinking. He resists distractions and once committed to dealing with a customer problem, sticks at it until it's resolved. So senior colleagues see his versatility as a valuable contribution. Malcolm views his future success as being in the area of customer service. Then one day his boss calls him to an unscheduled meeting and the reason soon emerges. Malcolm, hi. Um, look, I'd like you to move to the HR team, helping them deal with our trade unions. They're becoming, you know, a, a little hard to satisfy. Now they focus not just on pay, but on issues such as home working. Wow, that sounds exciting. Although, I know nothing about HR, all the people there. Why do you think I can make a difference? Well, because you're a natural at handling tough issues, and usually you resolve them. How about applying that talent with the trade unions? Well... It's nice of you to say that, but suppose I do move. What kinds of opportunities do you think this will open up for me? Mm, Excellent question, Malcolm. As I see it, doing a job for a year could be a stepping stone to a managerial role. Though, right now, I couldn't really promise anything. Yeah, I get it. I'm happy to make this move and see how I can apply my learning before I help the HR team. It sounds like an interesting experience. But before I accept, can I make a quick request? What do you need? Well... Look, I've got a million questions about what you've proposed and I want about maybe two weeks to become familiar with how the trade unions operate. You know, what has worked and what hasn't in the past. Yeah, that sounds sensible to me. I'm happy for you to take two weeks of study leave and I'll put you in touch with a few people here who can help. When Malcolm finally moves to HR, he finds ways to bring new insight to the ever-going negotiations. He further develops his talent for focusing on important issues. Now let's relate Malcolm's experience to your work situation. When it comes to being adaptable at work, people tend to have three main questions. How do I show adaptability at work? What are the examples of adaptability skills? And how do I stay adaptable without losing focus on my goals? Showing adaptability at work means taking on new roles and responsibilities. You adjust your work to reflect changing priorities. Part of the skill of being an astute adapter comes down to staying calm and responding quickly to unexpected situations. You realise when to push and when to let go of your ideas. When necessary, you take on different roles and responsibilities without friction. Instead, you constantly seek to upskill yourself. That means adjusting your communication approach, depending on whom you're talking to. Once success was partly a matter of intelligence or IQ, along came the more insightful emotional intelligence or EQ. Today, EQ is an essential ingredient for success at work, but with accelerating change, the world becomes ever more complicated, and now your ability to adapt, or AQ, matters even more than EQ. AQ, or adaptability quotient, is now centre stage, and this means that you ask what-if questions about your work situation and your life. Look for ways to unlearn challenges that you've already known and replace it with new information. You explore the world more intensely. Check out the Adaptability Quotient Test at the website's link pages for more insight about your AQ. To show adaptability when change is in the air, make sure several options are under discussion. This promotes brain and day-to-day flexibility. Other options you can take include Highlight disruptors. You and your work colleagues think about what might upset what you've already tried to achieve. You check assumptions. You keep thinking and asking questions about what we already know about an issue or a challenge. Are you or your colleagues wedded to widely held beliefs that might need to alter, be dropped altogether? Make plans. Reflect on your goals for success at work. What trends might impact these? What skills are you not fully exploiting? Assess threats. Treat threats or risks to your success as an essential part of your planning process. Devise actions to handle them. Speed up. How could you support your success? By speeding up how you work. 
As a quick adapter, you accept alternative ideas, unexpected changes and urgent strategic requests. Given the rapidly changing workplace, be willing to switch and adjust plans quickly. The second question that people ask is, what are examples of adaptability skills? Well, there are many and all of them are learnable. They include clarity of purpose, resilience, active listening, asking questions when unclear, emotional intelligence, and paying attention to non-verbal cues. The third question people ask is, how do I stay adaptable without losing focus on my goals? Once executives at the Ford Motor Company were focused almost exclusively on efficiently producing cars. When they were offered a new rust prevention system to protect the underneath of vehicles, they realized it meant costly changes to the factory production lines. They passed on adopting the offered innovation. Some years later, those same executives were forced to purchase this well-established rust prevention technology at a much greater cost. Worse, competitors had long since gained the advantage of the new process. Your goal may change. Being focused is good, but not when circumstances require a change. The economist Paul Samuelson once explained, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do, sir? And that was once attributed to other economists, such as Keynes. Staying adaptable may mean keeping within your goal, though you may need to modify. Are you willing to do it? For example, letting go of long-held assumptions, even if that seems painful. For example, being highly focused on your goal can mean that you are often in the flow. That is, you become intensively engaged in the process and consequently resist distractions. The downside of flow, though, is that you may miss seeing the warning signs that change is needed to your approach. So what action am I proposing? First, treat being adaptable as a priority and not a burden. Constantly adjust your work in response to unexpected pressures. And finally, treat demands to adapt as normal and presenting an opportunity. And my takeaway from all of this, adaptability is becoming essential for success at work. Stay alert for when you need to adjust your work and priorities. You've been listening to an episode of Andrew's 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. For more episodes, subscribe free to my regular weekly podcasts. You can catch up on past ones at the 50 wayssite where you can also become a foundation member with access to e-learning units, further reading links, and the forum where you can ask questions, share problems, and join a growing community of people who seriously want to succeed at work. Now there's a new book and an audio version called, you guessed it, 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. Buy it at Amazon or the 50ways.site. Unmissable. Thanks for listening and bye for now until next week.